Joel Skousen, editor of World Affairs Brief, is going to be joining us to cover major geopolitical developments and to take your phone calls. Justin Trudeau, the son of the former prime minister, now that we live in a society where we've brought back royalty, has been elected. Justin Trudeau, the leader of the Liberal Party, will become Canada's second youngest prime minister and the first to follow a parent into office. Born in 1971 to the Trudeau family, Canada's prime minister at the time, and, uh, and it goes on from that point. All I know is they are going to come after your guns like they did last time. The problem is the outgoing prime minister has been a total globalist and signed Canada onto the TPP, and a lot of that was the backlash is what got Trudeau in. I wonder if he'll continue to try to get him out of the TPP. Notice they said they had to get the TPP signed two weeks ago in secret because Canada was about to have an election and might not be part of it, and so they needed to get it done before the new prime minister came in. Well, he's got the power to try to pull them out of it and to make it public. Let's hold our breath and see if that actually happens. Canada's liberal leader, Trudeau, not just another pretty face. He's a young and handsome outdoorsman and former bartender, among other roles far removed from politics, proved Monday he's not just another pretty face. The son of the late and beloved premier, he led Canada's opposition liberal party to a landslide in Canada's general election. The former French teacher, age 43, overcame campaign attack ads claiming he was just not ready to lead Canada. So it's just another stunt. You know, it'll be, oh, a black president, oh, a pretty boy president, oh, a woman president. I don't care what color you are, how old you are, just don't come after people's guns. Just don't push more welfare state. Just don't push more, oh, I'm so sick of these people. Mm. And I'm so sick of how we can't ever have good conservative responses to this. We've got to have these controlled opposition people like Cameron and Harper and Boehner and all the rest of it. And, you know, they want more neocon rhino types to be the new speaker. That fight is certainly heating up in a big way. Some of the topics that we're going to be covering. China's selling tons of U.S. debt, but Americans could care less. Bloomberg. Global trade is collapsing as the worldwide economic recession deepens. Ex-U.S. agent gets over six years for Bitcoin theft in Silk Road probe. We're going to get into Ted Cruz says he cannot overstate the threats to Internet freedom, independent news websites like Drudge. Obamacare penalty now kicks in. That's Associated Press. I know they told you it didn't exist. Like the death panels, it you could read the bill. It always existed. That's another thing. It's man, it, it's hard to believe they lie so nakedly to their moron constituents, and then their moron constituents, a lot of them don't even remember a year or two later when they get hit with the lie in their pocketbook. But nevertheless, that's going on. And, and then also, we're going to get into Star Wars. You know, Star Wars is cheesy, and really the only good ones as an adult to watch it would be maybe Episode 4, Episode 5. Episode 3 is pretty good for its plot, false flags, bringing in tyranny. But now, you know, there's copies of the script floating around for the new Force Awakens. And World at Daily asks, is it anti-white? No, I don't think it's anti-white because... You've got a star-studded cast of, of different people with different colors, but it certainly pushes the unified agenda of feminism, where on the movie posters, it's the, you know, the, the hero is a woman, which would be fine if it wasn't every movie now, the heroes and bosses are all women. Joel Skelzen is a best-selling author on secure homes, on survival, on strategic relocation, probably the preeminent expert on that. And he, of course, was also a Marine Corps fighter pilot and an officer during the Vietnam era. But he's better known for his political analysis of what's happening in the world.
and he joins us for the hour. I will open the phones up at the bottom of the hour for any questions or comments you have directed at Joel Skousen or myself, worldaffairsbrief.com. He is the editor of worldaffairsbrief.com. David Knight will be hosting the fourth hour today that we've added to the transmission in the wrap-up show. We have China selling tons of U.S. debt every day, but Americans could care less. That's a Bloomberg headline, not an InfoWars headline. Global trade is collapsing as the worldwide economic recession deepens. And now the Federal Reserve is coming out admitting that the economy is beginning to degrade. We also have the fight between Bush and Trump heating up with Trump pointing out that 9-11 happened on Bush's watch and that he knew it was coming, which was admitted at the time. Just type in Bush knew, you'll get Associated Press, New York Post, you name it, from the time. They lied about those memos. They lied about the CIA warnings. We're also going to get obviously into the latest on what's happening in the Middle East with the Russian air bombardment backed up by Revolutionary Guard out of Iran, Hezbollah out of surrounding areas as well, and Cuban forces, and I can't stand Cuban forces that fought against U.S. forces and others, obviously, in Africa. But at the same time, this is an old coalition, and it's fighting an offensive force of al-Qaeda and Saudi Arabia and the West, so it is just. Um, now, the Russians stay there, or the Russians start expanding, then it's a tyranny. So I don't, I don't romanticize any of this but i would imagine joel skousen will probably he's an expert on this want to start first with the situation in the middle east in syria and then we will expand out from there into the larger geopolitical issues and what he sees happening in election 2016 we also have the polls last week and this week Rand Paul, the senator, but Ron Paul drug into a court hearings, felony hearings that a judge dismissed the main felonies, but they're still going after Jesse Benton, Ron Paul's former chief of staff, for, quote, lying to the FBI. Well, they can claim that you made a mistake or claim you got one thing wrong and then that's lying. That's why you cannot talk, in my opinion, to the FBI, even if you want to tell them something truthfully that happened. Uh, because if they're corrupt, you don't know which agents you're dealing with then they'll just say you lied to them if you get anything wrong. And that's what they convict most people for. And so they're clearly going after the polls now. If you look at it, it's for supposedly getting an endorsement from a candidate. Uh, they're going after a lot of other people. There's this reign of terror on free speech. Ted Cruz says he cannot overstate the threats to Internet freedom, independent news websites like Drudge. We, of course, have had a Supreme Court justice, and I've been told who, at dinner with Matt Drudge telling him, no, we've been told they're going after free speech the next year or two, and that internet freedom will be shut down for libertarians and conservatives. So what I'm getting at here is the new world order is moving. Now, is that because are they moving fast because they're behind, or are they moving fast because they're arrogant? I think it's a mix of both, but Joel Skousen joins us. Joel, I've thrown a lot of issues out there in the last four minutes. You join us via video Skype. But what do you want to tackle first, Syria? Yes, let's talk about Syria because it it still is the major force uh, that the globalists are dealing with. It's the major defeat that they're going that they're probably not going to be able to overcome. I think they'll be able to overcome Trump. They'll be able to overcome the resistance to internet freedom and all the other things that they do in the name of securing our liberties. Uh, but uh, they're not going to be able to stop the Russians. I don't believe in in Syria. And right now, from what the news sources I've got in the Middle East, uh, this, uh, the, it's mostly Hezbollah in terms of the ground troops, not the Cubans and not the Iranians. There are those there, but I would say almost 75% of the ground troops that, uh, that Syria is using in the um, towards Aleppo, which is the largest city in, in, was the largest city in Syria, and under uh, uh, al-Qaeda control or the U.S.-backed rebels, uh, the Russians and Hezbollah have captured all of the surrounding towns in the province of Aleppo. And so 
they're gearing up and Iranians are coming in. They're gearing up for a major battle to take Aleppo. This is going to be a game changer in Syria because it's, first of all, extremely embarrassing to the U.S. We've been fighting ISIS supposedly for a year and have never been able to do anything like the Russians have done in three weeks. And um, it's also a real stick in the eye for the globalists who have a major agenda in taking down Syria. It's not going to happen now. Assad is probably going to survive. Though, you know, the Russians may, in accommodation with the world uh, decision that, you know, Assad has to go, they may allow some other type of election, but it's not going to be a, a jihadist takeover of Syria, which would have involved, you know, basically a bloodbath. Um, it would have uh, Libya all over again. And I don't think Russia is going to allow that, and the globalists cannot stop it. Dr. Paul Craig Roberts uh, was on the show last week, and he thinks they'll up their assassination attempts on Putin, and that goes with the past history. Do you think the New World Order would be bold enough? Would the Anglo-Americans be bold enough to try to assassinate Putin? I do not, uh, Alex. And the reason is the globalists want a strong Russia. That's why they've continued to you know, violate their own sanctions, deal in Russian oil and Russian rocket motors and things, uh, which we depend upon. Uh, you know, the sanctions are token sanctions. They want a strong Russia. They want a strong Putin who will rejuvenate the feeling of the old Soviet Union among the Russian people. They want this war, this third world war. And so, you know, that's my one criticism of Paul Craig Roberts. Uh, as good as he has been over the past decades, he's now... He really doesn't understand the nature of the conspiracy we're dealing with. Uh, he views Putin as a champion, and uh, he is doing the right thing in Syria in taking down the globalist agenda, but still, uh, the, the, the Soviet Union was a falsified uh, phony collapse. Uh, it's being rejuvenated. It's going after Ukraine, and eventually it'll go after the Baltic states. Uh, it's going to attack the West, and it's preparing to attack the West. So these are not the good guys, and neither are the Chinese. Um, and so I think we have to look at this realistically, as you mentioned in your introduction, I think we have to applaud the fact that Russia is stopping the globalist agenda in Syria, and that will affect the, the Iranian agenda as well, because Syria, remember, was to be taken down at the request of the Israelis before the Israelis would attack Iran. And that's why the U.S. conjured up this Iran, Iranian nuclear deal, simply to put the war on Iran on hold while they take down Syria. And now. Russia has just blocked that full force with their intervention. And um, so either the globalists have to create a, a separate war between Israel against uh, Syria or Saudi Arabia against Syria, using the excuse that Iran, Iranian troops are in Syria. And that's a possibility. What about Israel? Couldn't Israel be a wild card? Israel, we know, has been doing some flights in and around Syria. What about Turkey? shooting down um, a Russian drone, could we see something spark off a larger conflict? We could, but so far we don't see any of that. Um, the Russians have denied that the drone was theirs, uh, and that leaves a very interesting question. Did the Turk, Turks shoot down a U.S. drone, or uh, or could have been a, perhaps an Iranian drone? But the and, and the Russians may not be telling the truth. They may not want the embarrassment. I don't think anybody wants to tackle Russian jets. For example, the Russian jets confronted this week two Israeli fighters that were uh, going through Lebanon and uh, basically said, you know, halt, turn around, and they did. So even the Israelis, as good as their fighter pilots are, probably the best in the world, are reluctant to tangle with the Russians. Um, so, uh, as I say, I don't think we're going to Well, I'm sure that's because they've been given orders not to. That's right. You know, I I don't see a direct confrontation with NATO versus Russia um, because NATO and the United States don't want to provoke a war with Russia. This isn't the time for World War III. Russia and China aren't ready yet. Uh, but still, they've got to overcome this Syrian situation somehow. And uh, they may have to wait till Russia runs its course, takes back a majority of Syria for Assad. And if there are sufficient Iranian troops in there, the Saudis or the the Israelis could uh, use that as an excuse to intervene. 
Saudi Arabia has been making a lot of threats against Assad and against Russia, but at the same time meeting with the 